Hey everyone, welcome to Head to Head, featured by The Burn. I am your host, Christine Mansour. Um, just to provide a little background about what Head to Head is, uh, it's a platform where athletes can share their stories and um, just be authentic and raw and just show why they're passionate about what they do and uh, their different pursuits. And so on this show, I will be interviewing athletes from around the world who will share uh, their passion, their sport, and why they wake up and love the things they, they do. Um, and so today, I have a very special guest, and I'm very excited to bring her on. Her name is Temi Fagbenle, and we go way back. She's one of my best friends from college, and we are going to chat through some of the things that you know we're passionate about and, and the experiences we've shared together. So without further ado, I will bring on Temi to the show. Hello. 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 Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so wonderful to see you. Yes, yeah. absolutely. OK, so where are you calling in from? I'm calling in from London, England. Amazing, amazing. And so we actually, we'll get to this later in the show, but we actually just saw each other in Eastern Europe a couple of weeks ago for like our ultimate reunion after six years. And it was so good to see you and actually play sports, a different sport than what we started with um, six years ago, actually, yeah. for, <laughs> further back than that. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so, we started with basketball back at Harvard. Um, played not even a year together and then you know I continued with basketball you went your way and then you know however many years later what is it six plus years we met in Hungary for beach handball of all sports <laughs> <laughs> which is still like baffling to me because but also not because you know, I feel like that is the only way it would have happened where we would have met up, you know. And so it was just amazing to have that time, you know, together. It really was. And yeah. Tammy, I we got to unpack. We got to unpack yeah. our experience. So we played basketball for Harvard, which is a very interesting environment to not only be, but also to play sports, right? So, I mean, I'll just come out and say it. I mean, what a pressure cook cooking environment, right? Oh, just absolutely. So absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I, I always tell people, like, during graduation, I cried tears of relief because it was <laughs> over. Like, I love the challenge. It was great, you know, like, but yeah. it was just on 100 every day. And you didn't realize it, how on 100 you had to be to survive. Um, and then, like, it was over, and I just, the tears just couldn't stop. I was like, why am I crying? <laughs> it was relief that it's yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, it was yeah. really, you You put it perfectly. Like, you got to wake yeah. up and be ready yeah. for the yeah. day. I mean, there's so many challenges that were thrown our way. Yeah. And even starting with basketball. So I have a fun well, photo yeah. of us um, <laughs> during photo day. I remember our freshman year. Yeah, so freshman look at year. us. Look at baby, baby faces. <laughs> oh my gosh wow and tim i have to say like honestly you so i like you said i decided to to leave basketball and pursue other interests but it was so much fun playing with you like we immediately had the connection on the court and just we had, yeah we it did. was and like your flow your touch every, everybody guys listen up, listen up her touch her flow <laughs> is the best i've like i've seen in a long time and i've been playing basketball for a while and she if she wanted to she could be a pro but you know she wanted to do other things it's fine um but i was so looking forward to playing basketball with you you have no idea um I so know. When it, happen, it was like a crush a blow to my heart but playing together reuniting in hungary for beach handball was was so amazing even though we didn't so play amazing offense together I'm, I'm hopeful that that can happen you know one of these a hundred percent yes definitely um yeah i know it was it was super cool like that that whole experience and of course we'll get to that but yeah. i kind of want to talk more and kind of set the foundation so i kind of briefly yeah. describe what the burn is right okay. it's like why we're passionate about the things we do, whether it's, you know, the things that we do, we, we get off the beaten path and do something unique, or if we do something that's mainstream, but kind of do it with our own style, which is exactly what you've done with basketball, right? Yeah. Like you have 
basketball has taken you all over the world, but you yourself have, you've also taken yourself around the world doing all of these different, uh, you have a lot of hobbies and interests and different professional ventures. So I'd love to hear more about, okay, so we, you know, after graduation, after you graduated yeah. Harvard, you went to USC and you got your master's, right? Yes. yes so in what was that? Was it communications? So I did public relations. That's right. Yeah. 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 So and so was, which I mean you're using after Harvard, like I told you, like I cried tears of relief because you know I thought it was over. I thought it was over. But I ended up having a year of eligibility left. And so I was just like, you know what, even though I'm burned out from school, I do not want to do any more school. I can't just waste this opportunity, you know, for another chance at a free education, you know. So I said, you know, I have to use this year of eligibility and I'm going to use it and get a master's. Why not? You know, just add on to, <laughs> you know, the, the repertoire. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm done with the cold. I have to go somewhere warm. So I was looking at Los Angeles. I was looking at Miami. I was looking at um, wherever Stanford is up north. Um, and then I ended up with USC warm place I, it was the best time of my life i'm so yeah. glad i went there it was you know great balance of basketball and, and academics obviously it's a fantastic school it was the number one public relations actually um school in the country at the time so i was very happy to, to be to be doing that yeah definitely okay and then tell me about the WNBA. tell me about how that was how you know the, the best times, the worst times, just kind of give us like a whole, just the flow of the experience. Yeah. Well, I think first of all, I, I think it's important to note that I didn't think I was going to be playing professionally. You know, I don't know if you remember, but at Harvard, I battled with chronic tendinopathy. You know, my knees were the worst, um, just debilitating pain every day. And so, you know, after uni, I was just like, you know what? I just think I'm going to give it a break. My, my knees are just too much. But I was fortunate enough to be linked up with an amazing trainer. His name is David Buer. And we basically worked on three months, just didn't play basketball. He said, I have no business playing basketball. What am I doing? Your knees are shot. So we kept off the basketball court and we just worked on my body, strengthening my body every single day leading up to the WNBA. So I was drafted after USC, um, it was great and everything. Um, but I said, you know what? I don't think I can go play pro with my knees like this. And so physically, working, yeah. physically there's no point. Yeah. I'm going to be, yeah. I'm going to hurt myself even more. Right. Um, so to have had him for that time and I was the strongest I've ever been. And I was so ready to go. Um, that was such a blessing. And so, you know, when the season started, I fit in. I went to the Minnesota Lynx. We won a championship that year. And it was just, it was just I just felt so blessed to, to just be there and just be part of, of history, you know? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh my God, like you just roll in the WNBA and then you win this national championship. And it's like you're on oh top of gosh. the world. And I was, playing, yeah. Playing with the best players in the world too, right? Exactly. Playing with yeah. legends, literal legends. You know, Maya Moore, Sylvia Fowles, Lindsay Whalen. Rebecca Brunson, so Simone Augustus, for goodness sakes. If you guys don't know these people, please look them up because they are literal legends. Um, so I just felt yeah. so blessed just to be in their presence, to be their teammates, to, to you know, be part of history with them. So it, it was great. And I spent three years with Minnesota. Um, and then, yeah, no, it was just, it was, I learned so much playing professional basketball in the league. And I also played not only in the WNBA, but overseas, let's say, in Poland. I, I spent two years in Poland. I went to Turkey, played in Italy, went to Spain. Uh, now I'm about to go back to Turkey. So it's just been yeah. a roller coaster. It's been a roller coaster. Uh, so, so <laughs> cool. And just the epitome of what it means to sort of use sport as a way to have these new experiences and travel the world and just exactly. learn so much about yourself, so much about yeah. different cultures and just yeah. it opens up your, and to be able to really like dig in and hone that competitive yeah. aspect as well. I mean, it's, you know, I found so more, I guess I'll explain my history with Beach Handball and then we'll go into yeah. how we met up again with sport, but a different yeah. sport. 
Um, so, you know, I had quit basketball in college and I was always trying to find my way with just, you know, intramural sports and just pick up games. I just, I've always had that competitive edge. <laughs> and so I, after graduation, I was like, oh, you know what? I, I want to plan a team again, you know, but I, I don't want to play inside anymore because I, you know, I moved to California. I was playing a ton of beach volleyball. I was playing spike ball on the beach. I was surfing. I just, I loved being outside in the sun and I, that's actually how I stumbled upon beach handball. Um, and so I started playing and I immediately fell in love with the sport and I saw, you know, even though it was not a main, it's not a mainstream sport by any means. Right. Um, it's still, you know, there's still a community and it's growing and growing. And, you know, I saw the opportunity to play at a high level and travel the world and, and mm -hmm. use that as a tool for me to go around, you know, the world and meet athletes from different communities and, and cultures. And it just, it's kind of, it's amazing. Right. And so yeah. I connect with you, you know, it's obviously beach handball is still an amateur sport. It's, it's, mm -hmm. a, there's a lot of self-starters in the community, which is exciting, but it's also yeah. financially, it's, it's kind of a burden because we right. do it really for our own way. And that was actually one of the first things that you, you mentioned about yeah. how interesting <laughs> this community of athletes is because yeah. we're all paying for our way to, to exactly work. i was saying like i've never seen anything like it like people coming paying to <laughs> fly to hungary and, and travel to poland and all of these things and pay to participate in the tournament <laughs> pay, <laughs> pay for the hotel pay for everything why just for the love of the, for the love yeah. of the game for the love of the community for the love i've never seen anything like it, it was so beautiful and it was so yes. positive you know even when you lose you're ecstatic because i don't know why it's just beach handball it's great and it's like whoa this is refreshing yeah. because yeah. Like, you know, until i lose in basketball i'm not happy by any means so, <laughs> it's just interesting to see that uh, another side of sports you know losing with grace, losing with, with happiness, being positive and also winning and just being a community. It was, it's fantastic. I think it's yeah. got a great future, Beach Handball World. Yeah, thank you. You know, I, I believe that too, of course. Yeah. You know, I feel like I've kind of becoming sort of an ambassador for the sport because I do, like you said, like the positivity and the fair play, it's all so salient and every single time you step on the court, right? It's people are, awake they're positive they're athletic and they like that vibe of just being happy and super competitive exactly and i think it has something to do also with being outside it must do and also you know being barefoot on the sand you know you're grounding the whole time the sun is there you're getting a beautiful tan you're getting the vitamin d you're just it's you know <laughs> totally, <laughs> you're totally. <laughs> yes Yes, definitely. It's yeah. funny because a lot of the, okay, so a little plug about the team that you played yeah. on this summer. Um, I created a team that was a hybrid team with U.S. national at beach handball athletes and Dutch national beach handball athletes. And yeah. together we formed this like cross-cultural team that, I mean, yeah. I know that Americans learn so much from the Dutch players because they have been playing all of their lives. And the Americans were just like those weirdos who have played different sports growing up. And then we found handball later in life. So we look weird, but we're athletic. And so it's just right. kind of like, it's been like such a hilarious balance of like these very traditionally trained Dutch players and like these yeah. Americans who were just flying through the air and legs are everywhere. And we're just using yeah. our background from different sports. And I personally use a lot from basketball. I mean, yeah. all those alley-oops, I mean, that's, that's basketball 101, right? Yeah. Like it's, that's, that's what I connect with. Um, <laughs> And so it was so fun to kind of get all different cultures involved and then having you. So at some point I need to, okay, let's just talk about you and Beach Handball and like how the first, the first game that we put you in, diving right into the fire. Um, we randomly met up in Salgotarian, Hungary. I, yeah. I still don't know how to say it. Um, yeah. Just this random town in the middle of Hungary, like two hours away from Budapest. And we just show up, and this is where we reconnect after six years at this like, yeah. tiny hotel. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you've been inviting me uh, to come and play yeah. beach handball for the longest, right? And so I'm just so happy I had time this summer to to come and do it. And so I was just like, you know what? F it, I'm doing it. I'm going. And so I just booked a flight, 
to, to Hungary and we met up. I can't believe it still. I'm just like, how did I even get to South Gotar here? And I have no idea. But, you know, we saw each other and it was just like old times all over again. And just, Literally. we just felt so blessed. And so, and we are. So, um, just, I don't know. I had such a great experience. And obviously, like I told you before, like, learning a new sport from the beginning was such a challenge such a humbling experience for me because i was in my mind you may say otherwise as you did for i was terrible and i was the to me i was the worst player there and i I'm just, I was just trying to find ways to help in any way i could right um but just that experience of starting again from the beginning you know and just trying to grasp something and, and failing and also your little triumphs was just was a great experience yeah yeah i mean oh my gosh tem to go from playing on a hardwood floor for the last 20 years of your life to like immediately jumping on the sand which is a completely yeah. different surface i mean it's Absolutely. literally like it was night and day and <laughs> let alone like you we threw you in the first game that we had together we had one training session that you learned like you know how to play some defense and how to just move on the sand the move, first yeah. game, dude it was the hardest game that we had all tournament <laughs> against the top hungarian club beach handball team yeah. in the country and boom like you were Let's off. Go. <laughs> yeah yeah and i like i actually have a clip i want to share um of oh, some no. game footage of the first game that you you made a stop and it was just oh, like oh wait let me let me see if i can do this here oh, um but yeah it was just so so amazing oh here we go <sighs> That's you. <laughs> Look at that stop. Like you literally, this was the first game of beach handball you had ever played. And you were there in the middle. I could hardly jump. Oh my gosh. Snatching that ball. <laughs> like, just so, so cool to watch, Tim. It was, oh. Honestly, I was so proud. And like, you're right. Like, Seriously, the hum the humility of you just not knowing how to do any of this and yeah. stepping on the court and just being big and yeah. being intimidating yeah. and right. you made it such a difference to mm. our team and, and not even just in a technical beach handball sense, but also like the energy and spirit that you brought just yeah. elevated our minds and our energy. And we just, I know I wanted to compete harder and better because you were there and I know how competitive you are and I know how much you want things yeah, yeah. and like you wouldn't like i think there is a you have this like tummy talks right this kind of mm -hmm. thing on your instagram about yeah. like there's one post that you posted that i loved it was just like if you're gonna do anything don't half-ass it right, right like you right. Like, what's, what's the, the point? point of doing anything if you don't give yourself fully to it yes. and so it's just i i you know I, it, it was inspiring being back on the court with you and i know yeah. all of my all of our other teammates felt the same way and so you just oh. you elevated the energy and you elevated the team um something that was so special and so yeah. for that i mean yeah it was just a blast to get back out there with you and i yeah, would like to share another clip of you playing defense that literally one tournament later you took over right so <laughs> you're second quick winner and you just got after it and so i'm gonna share that one i think you Boy. know what sequence i'm talking about um me flying <sighs> flying in the air and like oh given no care in the world yeah Not yeah really no, but like the tracking that you have um Let's see. Oh, oh yeah, right. tracking. Oh, I remember this. This one. I just, yeah. I just pretended I was on the basketball court. Yeah, I know. I know. Your movement yeah. on the sand was so, so good. Okay, so see, you see you right here. So you're in the middle. Boom, boom. Like the way, yes, yes. The way you like spin and turn around. <laughs> like, I can't get over this. <laughs> <laughs> I was so, so, so good. Focus. Like, and you were saying, like, most people would just give up after the first term. Yes. Like, okay, yeah, she passed me. But no, I was like, you know what? F this. I am, I'm trying to stop this woman. <laughs> yeah, no, totally, totally. And so it just, you know, it was like, it was so incredible. Um, so, oh, we have a question um, from the app. So, also, I oh. just wanted to do a plug for the Burn app. So, everyone who's listening and tuning in, Go to the App Store, download the Burn. Um, it's spelled B R N, yes. 
And so you don't miss out on any of their live streams because this is actually one of many different um, shows that we're going to have on this on this app. So make sure you go to the app store and do that. And so someone actually asked you, Temi, what was your favorite moment from your sporting career? My favorite moment from my sporting career. Wow. Well, I'm going to have to say the 2012 Olympics. Um, it was just, I was 19 years old. I was youngest on the team at the time. And it was just such a defining moment in my career, um, just in terms of aspiring to more and, and, and wanting to, to just do better and be better. Um, you know, the Olympics is the pinnacle of, of sport and, and just to see all the Olympians all in, in all different shapes and sizes. You know, you see someone who was seemingly obese and then someone who is uh, petite and small, but they're perfect for their specific sport. And, it's, and everybody's an Olympian. It's just like, wow, this is, this is truly magical. Um, so that would, well, that would be, you know, one of my favorite moments from my sporting career, just being in the village. And it was in my hometown, London. And, you know, that's gonna, that's a once in a lifetime experience. It's not gonna be in London again for who God knows how long. Um, so just thankful for that, for that time, you know. Oh, so yeah. cool. I just remember casually you come back to school, like, you know, as a sophomore, like, hey, you know, how was your summer? Oh, I went to the beach. I just hung out. I did an internship, like, you know, just hanging out. And then you're like, oh, I went to the Olympics and played in the Olympics. Just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hadn't played a, a university game before I went in the Olympics, isn't it? Because I didn't play my first year. Right. Um, yeah. And it was just right into the Olympics and then sophomore year start start at Harvard. So oh my gosh. No, it's just, it's just been a blessing. I just that's what I keep saying. A blessing, a blessing, a blessing, because it just really has, you know, like my whole my whole journey through basketball, through sport. Um so yeah, and I also think it's a testament, like even just me, the way I've gone through my my life and my career, you know, with the traveling and everything, and also you being open to traveling and visiting other countries and experiencing other cultures, just a testament to just the open-mindedness one has to have to kind of be a successful athlete, to be a successful person who travels for their sport, you know? Um, there's so many times I've seen, you know, Americans or people who are not from that specific country complain about why aren't they speaking English? Why aren't they, why don't they have burgers? Why don't they, you know, have McDonald's or whatever? Like, dude, you're in Poland. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're like in Turkey, are you kidding me? Like get, get with the program, you know, yeah. they're not, they don't need to, you know, conform to how you are you need to actually respect what's going on here and, and yeah. you know even kind of speak that's why i love to speak the language you know as much as i can in these in wherever i am so yeah because they love it and they respect that definitely you make an effort yeah. to connect with the culture and people immediately respect you so much more for that so it's exactly. definitely i remember so okay so we had our tournament in hungary and then we actually went on a road trip it was kind of an epic like eastern european road trip which was amazing that was your first road trip I yes think, right? yes my first yeah road trip. <laughs> yeah so it was amazing was totally amazing and then we roll into poland and you're just whipping out the Polish, we're just like, oh my God, like she's amazing. Yeah, you just don't know when it's gonna um it's gonna help you or you're, you're gonna use it in your future. Right. And it, <clears throat> this has actually stuck with me. Like when I was younger, oh learn this maths or learn this French or learn this I don't want to learn it. Why? I'm not gonna use it ever again in my life. Come on, like why? <laughs> you just never know. So yeah. While you're doing it, just give it your all and just learn as much as you can because it's gonna help you some way down in the on, in your road. You just know, it just will and it has. Yeah. And sometimes I'm just like, oh my gosh, wow, I know that. Like, why do I know that? You know? Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah, because you got after it. Like any opportunity exactly. that you have to learn, you just get after it, and that's. Yes. I think that's we we connected since day one, right? And I yeah. think we knew that we had that burn I've the actual yeah. burn right but that <laughs> desire to just like learn and dig deep exactly. and challenge ourselves and just yes. experience so many things through that lens of passion right exactly. and so that's opened up so many doors for for both of us and yeah. I and I just I can't imagine living any other way it's just right. it's so important to me to 
and, and for you to grab life by the horns and exactly. just learn and grow and, exactly. you know, meet people along the way that will help you and then, you know, return yeah. the favor and just, it's, it's, yeah. life is so beautiful if, if it's yeah. what you think of it. Um, because, because why not, you know? Right. What's what the do you have to lose? Yeah. Like, you know, like when I think about it, like every time I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this or whatever. I'm like, why not? What is the alternative? You know, sitting on my ass doing what? Like, right. watching music. Like, what am I doing? So let's just go for it. Let's yeah. experience life. Let's. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not. You know, when you, when people say this, oh yeah, life, whatever. It sounds like you like to say frou frou or whatever. <laughs> it really is not frou. <laughs> <laughs> not frou frou. It is real. You know, experience yeah. things to the to you to the fullest. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. That's what it's all about. I don't know. This is very morbid, but I picture myself on my deathbed, like kind of, yeah. you know, often where it's like, okay, what the heck do I have other than memories and like good people Absolutely. around me? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, I, I like nice things here and there, but it's all yeah. about the experience for me, you know? Exactly. And so, exactly. um, yeah, it's it's at times it can sound frou frou, but I think it sounds more frou frou for people. Wow, that was a tongue twister. More frou frou for people who don't, you know, don't have that or don't know how to find that burn and find, you yes. know, they don't know what they're living for. And so that's kind of that's kind of one of my passion points also is just to help people realize what their their passion is and why yeah. why they wake up in the morning and just yeah. you know, their burn <laughs> like, oh, like right. find, how can you help someone find their burn and you know right. through a lot of the videography work that I do that's my main focus is to just show authentically how someone can just achieve you know at, like pure happiness in life yeah. I feel like that's yeah. lost upon a lot of people unfortunately and um Absolutely. Yeah, but, and they don't even know how to go about it, you know. Um, right. And, and even if they're worthy of it, um, but everybody is is worthy. Definitely. Of it. Yeah, and, and yeah. honestly, it's like the first. You just take the first step, and that's it. That's the hardest part. You just take the first step in whatever the heck direction that you can just go yeah. move forward in, yeah. and that's yeah. how you start, right? But like, that is that is that takes courage, you know. Because you have so many, you know, your, whoever it is, your family, your so-called friends, different ears and eyes, and you feeling like, oh my gosh, are they going to judge me for being, doing what I want and not doing what, you know, what they expect? Are they going to hate me? Are they going to laugh at me, laugh at me? You know, are they going to ridicule yeah. me? And so when, once you are able to let go of those inhibitions, you're, the freedom you feel, it's just... <laughs> second to none because you just realize it doesn't matter it doesn't matter right. what anyone else thinks it really doesn't yeah. you right. know <laughs> i know no it's true like it's it's like it's so simple like if you are your authentic and real self things will happen because you're living out your truth because if you're faking it or if you're worried about what people will th you know that's there's a layer of superficiality to your life that doesn't enable you to do what you truly are meant to be doing so as soon as you just shed all of that and just live your life, you know, with and, and get that with, you know, passion yeah, and, exactly. and realness and things just yep. start to fall into place. Fun, so, yeah. um, awesome. Yep. Well, great. I'm so pumped up right now. My heart's Thank great. You. I was like, I'm ready to take on the world. <laughs> ready to take on. What's my next project? What's my next thing? What am I doing? No. Exactly. But also, you know, like speaking about that, because we're not perfect, you know, and I think it's important not. to understand that. But we, um, but what we do do is try and live as, as trying to find you know some purpose but it's so important to also stay in the moment you know i think it's very easy to be like what's what am i doing next what am i doing next what's my what's my next passion where am i going you know yeah. you know like trying to find that balance between um wanting and and expecting more of yourself and wanting to do more but also just being in the moment just resting and, and being appreciative for what you already have Definitely. So, um, that's, what I, that's my balance. That's what I'm trying to work on. Huh? Definitely. No, same for sure. Because I mean, with our ambition and with, you know, everything that we've done so far, we're naturally, we're inclined to look to see what's forward and what the next step is. But you're right. Like it's, and I struggle with that too. Like I, you know, I have to consciously take a step back and just 
start to be more self-aware and start to realize yeah. things around me, how I can grow the things I'm currently working on. And then knowing that that will lead to exactly. potentially more fulfilling, deeper experiences instead yeah. of just trying to, trying to do everything. But it, right. it's hard right. when we have a lot of hobbies and interests and yeah, exactly. It's hard exactly. to like reel it back and just yeah. You know, yeah. take some time. Yeah. And, and yeah. yeah. But that, that led yeah. to what you said about building memories because when you're in the moment, those memories are more pronounced. Those memories are more juicy, you know? They're more so real. So juicy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I yeah. love it. That's the most disgusting <laughs> word. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Amazing describing word right there. Yeah, yeah, I know. I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the juice? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh all right well let's just kind of pull back a okay. little bit okay. and talk about some life goals which i mean god that's like that's a very vague topic yeah. extremely vague but <laughs> if we you know can kind of juice it down a little bit to <laughs> <laughs> great word yeah i know thank you thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> okay juice, juice it down a bit juice it down a bit and like talk i don't know it can be a practical level it can be a non-practical level it can just be like what the heck do you want out of this life i mean we talked about how beautiful it is it's especially beautiful if you're living passionately um right but like what what do you want <laughs> <laughs> get deep, get deep. So to be deep. honest, to be honest, I don't know. And that is fully, that's with all honesty right here I'm speaking. All I know is that, as we talked about already, is I want to live my life passionately. I want to live my my life doing things that make me happy and give me fulfillment and so i'm on this journey where i'm um you know people talk about your purpose and all that stuff you know it sounds so ominous but i i i guess i'm looking for that purpose still um and, and i'm looking for it in in things that i love to do and like to do and different experiences and so i'm, I'm hopeful that that will uh, reveal itself to me one of these days um but until then, I, I will continue to live passionately and with love, you know. So, yeah. But but for sure, I would say, you know, I guess some goals of mine is just to, when it comes to, like, family, I'm, I'm very family-oriented. Um, and I want to look after my family in any anywhere, you know, in terms of myself and in terms of material things, in terms of my house and how I want to live. I want to live on a farm with the horses and all this, all you know. All these things. That's about um, court, of course. Yeah, exactly, of course. Yeah, and also a beach handball for sure. But, you know. And a beach handball, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Just one beach handball. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, what the, what the past few years actually have shown me that I'm very, I love empowering women. Um, and kind of, as you said before, kind of making them, helping them step into their own power and find their own passions. And especially women and girls, because, you know, that's one of these, the marginalized communities in this world. And it would just, it makes me so happy to see a woman who was shy or, you know, otherwise reserved step into her 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 truth and, and live unapologetically. It's, that's one of the things I love to see the most, so, yeah. Yeah, uh, amazing. I in in what yeah. you said about just in general, like combining things that you love to do and what you're like that's the that's the magic in life, right? And I feel like we both are touching on that because we are now we're doing things we're passionate about, right? And so mm -hmm. the real goal, speaking professionally and how to survive in the world, like you need money, of course. So it's right. it's kind of the magic twist of just how to monetize, you know, and combine right. the different things that we love to do and grow something that's larger than just ourselves. Yes, um, exactly. And so, yeah. And, and yeah, I I love uh, I love it all, Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the, the money, because money, unfortunately, is important in this world today. But 
I think that it helps that we're doing stuff that we already enjoy, that we're already passionate about. So the money will come, you know, when it does, you know, it, it it's already something that we enjoy doing. So we already very feel like we're getting paid for it. And, you know, we can do it without getting paid. So um, that is the beauty of it. Just trying to find something you're passionate about and then the money will, will follow after or try and find Definitely. a way to monetize it, like you said. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think that's a great segue into, yes. I'm sure we'll jump on this again sometime soon and talk about our different entrepreneurial ventures, but I'll oh, save yes. that <laughs> for <laughs> our next episode. Okay. Are <clears throat> you good? <laughs> You know when you choke on your own spit and you just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, goes down. No, just give me a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> sorry. Wow. Um, okay, Temi, you are amazing. Thank you so much. I already miss you. I saw you. I know. A couple weeks ago during yeah. our Eastern European yeah, yeah. It's only road trip. Ago. It feels like. Two years ago or something. I know. Like, no, I know. Right? Yeah. Crazy. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. But um, thank you so much for coming on. I Absolutely. always love our, our chats and, Me too, and yeah. brainstorming and empowering sessions that we just, you know, pump each other up and we'll <laughs> continue to do that. But thank you so much for coming on. This is thank this you is great. for having me, man. This was great. And I wish you all the best with this. This is a great initiative. So Awesome. And then for those of you who are tuning in, uh, feel free to follow us on Instagram. Uh, my name is just underscore Christine Mansour and Temi's is Temi Fag Benley, and you'll get to see a ton of really cool content. Um, <clears throat> I meant to show your Instagram. <clears throat> I'll do that next time. Excuse yeah, me. I'll do that next working time. on this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and on but, that note, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in and don't forget to download the app on the app store so you'll get some more exclusive content uh, on the burn and until burn. next time. Bye. Be burn. <laughs> All right. Thanks, burn. Everyone.